Okay, evening all. How you doing? I'm Brian Simmons. Uh, I'm the host of these uh, debates. Um, this is the last one. We had two earlier on. This is the third and final one. We have a, a five in our panel this evening just to finish off our last debate. The last debate is, is it time for UK cities to stop focusing on a day of partying that's related to carnival and focus on the serious issues around Black Lives Matters, um, which is kind of more important at the present moment in time, yeah? Um, so we'll go around the panel, um, starting with Cecilia, in terms of introducing yourself and tell us what is your response to that question. Hello, yeah, I'm Cecilia Henry. I run an organisation called um, Juve Up, which is a carnival-inspired health, well-being and development programme. Um, and I educate young people within the community and in schools around historical aspects of carnival. Um, but I'm also, I also take part, part in carnival as a carnival artist, and I'm also a participant as well, because I actually love aspects of carnival. So in terms of the question itself, for me, I, I feel like in terms of its the party element, the um, narrowing it down to just a day of partying is quite narrow because actually when you go to different carnivals in the UK and across the world, there's so many different elements to carnival and some people kind of tend to dip into the aspect that appeals to them. And then similarly in terms of Black Lives Matter agenda, um, I feel in this country we've kind of narrowed the Black Lives Matter agenda quite um, it's to kind of focus on um, police injustice, whereas I feel like Black Lives Matter, we need to be looking at the whole entirety of um, our Black lives and the oppression, whether it's over here, whether it's um, in Africa and so forth. So I, that's kind of my initial stance. Thanks for that. Um, Cheryl? Hi, I'm Cheryl Armatradian. I run Anton Appham Achievements Foundation and we do intervention programs with young people and children. In reference to the um, question asked, um, I, th I think not to sort of eradicate parties completely because they're a form of celebration. I think if we understand the meaning of why we have these parties and what their, their significance is, yes, that's fine. In reference to Black Lives Matter, I think we need to look at it from a holistic point of view, not just about the oppression, but about opportunities, development, what are the requirements and needs of our young people and our community in a, in a whole, and what are we doing as organisations and leaders to help Black Lives Matter? All right, next, Camille. Hi, um, my name's Camille London Mayo and I am the education lead for Phoenix Agenda Supplementary School. Um, and when I looked at the question, I thought that obviously it was provocative because you wanted to stimulate debate. Um, as an educator, I clearly feel that there's a time and a place for everything. Um, but in my opinion, um, it's we're at a time where as black people, we need to refocus and understand that the time is now for us to uplift ourselves as a people for the sake of the generations to come. And so if we decide to trivialize carnival as simply a day of party, then perhaps, yes, we do need to ease up on reducing everything simply to let's have a good time and forget about why we're here. So, um, and that's, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. The next person, Kwaku. Hi, my name is Kwaku. I'm an African history consultant. So I do programs around Pan-Africanism, uh, the global African history. I put my stuff on the, sorry, AfricanHistoryPlus.eventbrite.com. I also do things around the music industry. So I do music industry programs, which uh, I put on the bbm.eventbrite.com. Our organization, you can see maybe the, the, the background is BritishBlackMusic.com, Black Music Congress. And I do things and the BTWSC African History is Revisited. Now, in answer to the question, it talks about cities. So I'd imagine that we're talking about carnivals that take place in spaces like cities and towns. Often, those that are in control of those carnivals would be 
either the councils or the local um, government in partnership with community organizations. I would say that councils and in fact corporate sponsors are not particularly interested in the upliftment of, of, of Afghans or their history or their issues. They want to see numbers. If it's a corporate organization, they want mm -hmm. to see numbers to justify their logos and people's uh, seeing see their, their banners. And it, even if it's a council that's sponsoring it, as long as it's safe and they can say, okay, we've given this amount to the African community, so we take their bosses, that's fine. So I'll say the question really should be addressed to the organizers, and by organizers, I mean the African component of the organizing communities in, uh, in, in the carnivals are, are, are around, around town. Now, having said that, I have to say Claudia Jones's carnival in 1959 was not the first carnival, be it indoor or not, in the UK. There was one in 1955 before hers. But in 1959, as part of the brochure for the uh, Claudia Jones carnival, this was uh, a quote that has been often repeated. A people's art is the genesis of their freedom. So that speaks to a lot of political awareness. And what I'll say is that what she did was what was called the cabaret type carnival, i.e. indoors. You can control the agenda. Yes, there's a lot of uh, entertainment, beauty contests and what not, but I'm sure there are one or two speeches that spoke to uh, political issues. On the other hand, when you come out into carnivals of today, which is on the street, and you're talking about the meme of hundreds of people, in, or rather thousands of people into hundreds of thousands of people, I think it's a different category of fish, and I think uh, it's very difficult to control. Let me give you an example. I think a couple of years ago, someone died in the African community. So an African organization said they're going to carnival, and they're going to ask that we show respect with a one-minute silence. It did not happen. How do you control thousands of people and say one-minute silence? It did not happen. And I think a few years ago, when Black Lives Matter started as well, they went to carnival. But I, th I, I, I don't think outdoor uh, carnivals with thousands of people are the places where you can really get politics going or important issues. What you can do probably is to get your leaflets out and uh, to fly people and say, this is what we're doing. So you're welcome to come to, let me give a little his, historical. Uh, Before you go on, Chloe, let, let me, we'll get back to that. Yeah, okay. let me just introduce okay. Tundi and let me open the discussion a little bit more. Yeah, thank well, you. Thank Sorry, Tundi. Sorry, yeah, greetings everybody. Um, <clears throat> yeah, my name's Tunde. I'm a, um, an artist, an educationist, um, I'm a therapist. What else? Yeah. Um, the question. Is it time? Yeah. Uh, I think the word time is an important thing in terms of it's not actually an issue of just here and now. It is, it, it is about a connection between past and future. So we need to explore our responses in relation to that. Um, the, the notion of kind of focus, unfortunately, I think that our, our focus is dictated by other people based on the narrative that's sold to us and that collectively, essentially, we adopt in large, in large parts. The, the idea of a kind of party and entertainment are kind of viewed on two levels. Um, yeah, us coming together is no issue. It's not an issue for me, but it's, it's just a clarity about, well, what are we coming together to do? What are we coming together to celebrate? And that's, I think, part of the angst with Carnival, that there are so many um, reasons for coming together. It's, 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 hard to, it's hard to clarify that kind of collective identity about we come together for Carnival 4. So there's, 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 there's clearly many competing agendas uh, with that. Um, the notion of serious issues. We, we know, particularly currently, that term range of, dis, of kind of disparities and inequalities. Well, that's nothing new. We have, we have been experiencing um, disparity and inequality for several hundred years now. 
Um, and then the final thing around Black Lives Matters, I think it's a, it's a, um, there are some inherent issues with that because I, th I think there needs to be a, a debate about the distinction between um, Black Lives Matters, the organisation, and Black Lives Matters, the slogan and the movement. Yeah, um, because I often find that people have come together and there's a lot of conflict and some standing around that and maybe that's just something we need to one of the priorities is learning of how when we come together how can we come together and in in a focused way but agree to disagree because very often um when i'm looking at other communities there's this idea that other communities are solid together and that is just clearly not the true the the, the truth they 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 just have an agreed plat, um level that they that so they agree that for example we 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 often we're often always referencing Asians well yeah they agree that they're Asian collectively they agree that they that there are certain things that are a priority um, they agree to 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 pr promote I guess religious aspects and whatever that's one of the difficulties with us you know our level of agreement so that we can advance ourselves collectively is a is is, is something that's a there. perpetual difficulty. We'll hold it there. That thought in terms of that yeah so let, let, let's split it into two sections now discussion first in terms of is carnival just a party because all the aspects which we know about carnival yeah in terms of what it represents we're not doing it in the uk you know comparing to the caribbean and so forth so is it just a party we don't benefit from it in terms of uh, financially we don't benefit from it spiritually because we, we lost the aspect. So is it, is it a party? Please respond. I, I, personally, I personally wouldn't say it's just a party, um, especially when you're taking part and um, you're taking months to organize a carnival band or troupe. Um, and especially if you're, it depends, different carnival bands and different carnival troops will interpret maybe a theme differently. So I'm very conscious that if I'm either going to deliver um, a carnival troupe or I'm going to take part in one, that it, there's going to be an actual, the mean, there's a meaning, there's a message. Um, and it's almost like there's the art form and there's also, um, I, I, quite, I'm, I act as well. So there's also the acting side. So it's like um, a moving theatrical performance, but with a meaning. So the... So you've, obviously you've got the, 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 the carnival troops, but like I said, different carnival troops will have their own meaning. I know there's one in Leeds and they're very specific about having a particular meaning. Then you've got, there's um, a particular ancestry group in Nottingham, which specifically deals with the spiritual ancestry group. So what we have pockets of, kind of carnival troops who take, take part in different carnivals who will share a particular meaning. And of course, it's um, because we're performing some music, there's an element of celebration and an element of shared um, partying and, and so forth, but with a meaning behind it. And I think as well, what we've got to remember as well is um, the music behind what we, we, we're performing to. Um, we can choose to perform to music whereby maybe some of the artists are talking about Bacchanal, which obviously Bacchanal is um, in relation to um, celebrated the god of Bacchus in, in Roman days and it's about debauchery and, and, and revelry. Um, or we can choose to um, party to, to other, I mean you've got gospel type of um, so you've got, you've got very, you've got social commentary in terms of soca so i think we've got there's a wide element and it's down to the particular groups um who are taking part in terms of how they interpret and what message they want to get across there's a for me there's a, a lot that goes behind the preparation the party is a celebration of it but there's an elements of the skills that are developed uh, how it that through all the whole year because carnival is not just that one day, how it brings people together, how young people and children are learning skills, how these skills are then um, demonstrated on the day of carnival through the party and the dance steps, the dance steps um, incorporated with the themes and the stories that they try, 
trying to display the the um, the creative artwork that's behind what they're doing and the skills that are transferable and it's also very important about what's being taught within those workshops and then it, what, I think once they have an understanding of what they're doing and why they're doing it and they bring the celebration because so a lot of the themes are portraying what's happened to people throughout the years. Years ago when we had um, celebration in slavery they looked forward to their celebration. They could, weren't allowed to talk the same language. They weren't allowed to speak to each other, but they could do formats of dances that depicted stories and mockeries of their masters. So carnival is the same sort of thing. We get together at the end of once a year, at whatever time it is, and we celebrate our life. We demonstrate what happens throughout through the different themes. So it's, it's how you perceive it. It's not just a party, it's a celebration. It's depicting what's going on within our communities. I'd, I'd just like to say that I think that the fund, for me, the fundamental thing about Carnival is that it provides a link for our young people in terms of their identity, in terms of the cultures that they belong to. And where you have third and fourth generation young people born in this country who may, who may have never been to the Caribbean, who have no idea of the culture that they're coming from. Um, and I can say that because I teach, I've taught in schools and I know how much our young black children know about where their families come from, right? Not everybody gets a chance to go to the Caribbean once a year or wheresoever. When they see Carnival, it gives them an opportunity to kind of like link in with the cultures of their grandparents, of their great grandparents, and to just get a taste of it. Um, the manifestations of Carnival are varied, yes, but once you once we maintain or and are able to hold on to the traditions of carnival the masquerade the music the costume and the links to um, african history and the caribbean history once we hold on to those elements of it it is an educative experience it's an experience that is invaluable not only for us as big people but for the younger generations coming up I heard Arthur Franz speak earlier about the Leeds Carnival, and on a number of occasions, he reminded us that he was an African born in the Caribbean, and having come to Britain, he always wanted to put an African context to what he was doing. So I hear him, and maybe the Leeds uh, Carnival may be different. He's been at the helm for 50 years, so maybe they've got a theme that speaks to that. But when you look at the Notting Hill Carnival, people now see it as a Caribbean thing, but never started as a Caribbean experience. So uh, in London, so I can only speak to the London Carni uh, Carnival, Notting Hill Carnival, it's so big mm -hmm. and uh, the different elements, people spoken to the time people take to prepare their costumes and stuff with the preparations and stuff like that. And also that the mask, the dancing can tell stories. They can, I'm sure but it's whether you can understand that language. And from where I come from, most people going to carnival, I go to carnival for the music. Mm -hmm. Many of them stay in one place because we've got static sound systems and mm -hmm. say, we went to carnival and it was fantastic. They don't see the processions. They mm -hmm. don't hardly see the, 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 the costumes. So carnival is consumed in many, many ways. All I'm saying is that it, for me and my experience, most people see it as a partying thing. And I don't think there's something necessarily wrong about that. We should be careful not to try and bolt on everything onto one event. Maybe mm. there needs to be another space to talk about serious things like, by the way, I don't do Black, history, uh, so black Lives Matter, I do African Lives Matter. Maybe we need a different space to speak to Africans, African Lives Matter or serious <coughs> issues. I gave you the example of uh, my friend called Tony Agbetu from Ligali. An African child died in London. By the way, I say African, I mean people of African heritage. Right. And he wanted a one minute uh, silence. He publicized it before and he was shut down. People are not ready for anything serious than partying, certainly in Notting Hill Carnival. The only way you can make an inroad if, if you had a theme 
that anyone who's officially there has to go under that banner. I, 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 I was trying to develop a, a historical point. In 1987, that's when we started Black History Month. And the organization behind it was the London Strategic Policy Unit. They put in some money into Carnival and had a theme. But I can tell you, apart from a float with that banner, I don't think anyone took notice. So I think it's a big, big task or ask to try and say, look, we need to do serious things in Carnival, certainly in Nottingham Carnival. It's just Brother, gone too big and, Brother big, Quaker. and commercial. Brother Quaker, can I say I'm old enough to remember when um, that when that happened with the London Strategic Policy Unit, but I lived in South London prior to that, and I can tell you we had cultural events linked to Carnival long before um, the London Strategic Policy Unit decided to put their money in there. I think what you find is is that as African people, as Black people, we were doing this long before. Um, the councils and the authorities started to put money into it. They put money into it because they wanted to exploit what they could see was being, had lots of attraction to it. It was never a case of um, the carnivals happening because of the input of the monies. The monies, I feel, have, has corrupted it to a certain level. Um, whereas prior to that, you had communities coming together, you know, bringing their food, sharing their food on in different places um, and and being along the route and sharing, you getting the opportunity to taste the different foods, learn about the culture, see people doing um, different activities and things like that. And then, as I said, it became commercialized. So, yeah, I remember 1987, but there was a lot going on prior to that. My sister right Camille, you're absolutely right. So what you've rather brought into the conversation is community-run carnivals. Mm -hmm. uh, London, not even carnival, it's not a community-run thing. It's, it's much bigger. So yes, mm -hmm. I remember, I, ha I, wasn't, I didn't experience, but I, my, from my research, there were carnivals in Brockwell mm -hmm. and stuff mm -hmm. well, I understand that that needs to be documented because we tend to focus on Notting Hill uh, carnival mm -hmm. alone. So you're absolutely right. But I think to move forward, uh, Nottingham kind Carnival of, is a different beast. What beast? What we have to look at are community-run carnivals where we can put an African input, things like African Lives Matter or what issues. So even Windrush. Look, uh, I'm sure yes. two years yes. ago, they would have tried to talk about Windrush in uh, Nottingham Carnival, but it would just be a float passing by and it does not engage in the discourse of Windrush. I'm saying mm. Nottingham Carnival is a different beast, but let's try and identify community-run carnivals that are speaking to the African experience in England or, 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 or Britain. Those, those forms of workshops where you're going to be looking at the emphasis on, on the input of carnival and cultural matters can be then built in with the theme in, within the workshops building up to the carnivals because at the same time they may celebrate the party at the carnival but throughout the period of development they are actually learning. So it's what's, what's going on in those workshops. Are mm. they just there sewing a costume together or do they understand the history mm. behind the costume, mm. what they're making? Yep. I think yep. that's quite vital. Yeah. And most of the carnivals that I know of, Leicester Carnival, Leeds Carnival, there is always a theme. There is always a theme. Bristol Carnival, there's always a theme that, you know, that the, the um, participants work towards. And so when you see the costumes, you see how, how they manifest that theme. So, it's, you know. It's, it's, it's a theme strong enough. That's the key thing. If the, if, if the going just the party is stronger than the theme, that would always override the theme. And that's what I'm saying. Well, the theme what, is what is assumed strong enough. But the theme is bound to the in terms of the procession and the parade, isn't it? Mm. So those people yes. who were who were um, taking part and um, preparing for the actual parade, that's where they interpret the theme. Yes. So last year the theme was for Leicester was Windrush, mm -hmm. um, and and I was in a troupe whereby. Some of us dressed in um, like 1950s where and we actually performed um, during like as in terms of um, performed you know little, little sketches and you know performing the during the actual um, parade itself mm. so it's and, and our, our characters came to life and we interacted with the crowds and the audience mm. 
Mm -hmm. so, so again, like I'm saying, it, it depends on who is, it depends on which type of um, droops or um, mass band you have within a particular, um, you know, parade itself. And in terms of how people want to reflect the actual theme itself. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's quite hard to just generalize mm -hmm. because it is down to individuals particularly. Mm -hmm. Right. But the other point you've made is that there are themes, but they often confine to, to, to the mass, to the costumes. Certainly, it does not apply to the sound systems in London, for example, or, or people who, 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 who play music. They, they will play anything, so it does not speak yeah. to the theme. So. The sound systems well, is a totally different vibe. The sound yeah. systems have their own party that follow them, and that's the reason why they play what they're playing. That, yeah. that, that, that's part of the, the carnival experience, right? When in the times that I've been to Carnival, you would have um, because because in the last few years I've been I've gone back home, so I, that's where I've been. But what I've remembered was the big sound system. So you might go and you might go because you want to listen to a particular sound and you direct for that. But that would be that would be because you have lots of different people that go to Carnival. Some that go for the sound system, yeah. some that go for the costumes. I I know my mother. 80 years old she loves carnival why because she likes to go and see the costumes she wants to see who's how the procession is going how they manifest what whatever the theme is she goes that, to listen to the seal pan that's what she matter. goes isn't that supposed to be but that's the whole part of the problem the main main voice is not being heard yeah it's okay you go to carnival sit, stand by a sound for six hours i have no interest in carnival that is what that is what the problem is if, if, you're not, if, if you're not engaging in what the carnival means, you're just sitting there so sad. That is part of the problem. But, uh, the, the message but, is not out there enough. What? Uh, okay, so, so, okay so, so I, can, I can bring in that the fact that when you're listening to music, what does music do to you? What is the music yes. telling you? Right? It depends on the, vi so it depends on the I, vibration I, of music. I can listen, it I depends can on the vibration to, of music. Music yeah, has vibration. Yeah, but I can, I can listen to Calypso and it brings back memory of a childhood or me when I went back to St. Kitts. I can listen to reggae and it brings back some memories from the 80s when I was growing up. So it depends on what it is for you. Sometimes what we is don't get... It's about reminiscing. It's about reminiscing. You can reminisce 365 days a year. I'm talking no, about you don't, you know. Listen, <laughs> listen, if you go to the Caribbean, yeah. yeah, would you hear in Gerard Garish or whatever music playing yeah. into the carnival? You won't. It will focus on what the message is trying to say. In okay. carnival, if you're concerned yeah. in carnival, you will be, if you're, if, if you're acting a competition, you'll have to sing a political song mm -hmm. and a party song. That's you can't get away yes. with just doing That's what you yes. think it is. You That's have to get to the script. And if you're not yeah. stick to the script, it's just a party. That's the truth. If it's a party. That's true. What's what you call it all? It has yeah. to be follow the script. But yeah, you, yeah. So we talked about it before the X Factor. Okay, Tony, I'll let you, I'll let you um, okay. comment. All right. No, it's just been interesting listening. I, I, I just want to kind of go back a bit. Um, and it was interesting at the start of the discussion the examples that were being used around Carnival. I think the difficulty is that there are different agendas and interpretations of carnival as it has evolved. Now, I lived in London for many years. London is not a carnival. What London is, it's a street um, festival, yeah? Mm -hmm. If you look at what, um, lo how London as a corporation advertises or sees carnival, carnival is one of the jewel in its crown for the marketing of London as a business, yeah? And it has gone that way for quite some time, yeah? And we know that because, like was said, if I want to go to Carnival one year and I just want to go and stand by Cockstone, then I'm going to do that for six hours. And, I and I'm not looking to be judged about it for anything. If I want to go and look at the costumes, like my sister was saying, then you do that. If you want to listen to whatever, then you do that. If you just want to go with your crew and, and road man through the crowd, <laughs> that's what you do. So London as an entity is, a, is something very specific, yeah? I think the idea, the, the discussion about community-led 
carnivals is something different. Yes. Because I, I think um, there's probably, for me, two places in Britain where there's still the essence of carnival, probably Bristol and Leeds. Mm. Yeah. I think outside of that, I think you'd be hard pushed to really defend and say that is actually a carnival. What we experience in most of the carnival settings now are local authority marketing vehicles, yeah, with a little twist and a little colour and, you know, they have their own agenda. So there's that. Um, but, I, but I think if we, if we want to reclaim the whole experience of carnival, one of the things that I think would be useful is to, to, to observe how other communities are treated and how they function in relation to their celebrations and rituals, yeah? If you look at, say, something like every September, we, we, we are, and I'm not being anti-Semitic, he says, we are, we are loaded upon about the, about the Holocaust experience of the Second World War, yeah? And no one is allowed to change the agenda on that, yeah? We're here to hear history, we're here to hear the concerns of a particular group, and whether you like it or not, you kind of get taken with that, yeah? When, we, when, when Visaki comes around, or, or Diwali, Diwali, or whatever, yeah? All of those things are essentially kept in place. So if, if we're going to recapture the notion of carnival, one of the suggestions I've said for a number of years now is maybe that what we need in specific of the UK is a national federation of carnival, which we agree a criteria for the expression of carnival that's bedded in the traditional experience of carnival. And if we do things like themes and whatever, then what we're benefiting from is a, is a more potent collective experience, which can embrace entertainment, can em embrace a level of political awareness or whatever, yeah? But it really, it really comes back to the level or the deficient level, unfortunately, that we've been pulled into, into, the, ne into the, 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 the nature of how, as a community or as communities, we actually organise in our own interest. Brother so Tunde, yeah, I, 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 agree, I only agree with you to a certain extent. I like the idea about the National Federation, because I think that's a good thing. Um, I, have a, I have a bit, I have a reservation about what you're saying about um, the London Carnival, Notting Hill. Okay, because there are elements of Notting Hill Carnival that stay true to the carnival yeah, spirit. Yeah. So, and panorama, so Panorama, yeah. the biggest, biggest, um, um, congregation you would say of steel pan playing from all over the country all over the for throughout the year people are working towards panorama and notting hill carnival because that's their big event right and it's the, a wonderful opportunity to hear different variations in the spirit of carnival as it was for many, many years, going back to when in Trinidad with the big um, panorama for steel bands. So, uh, so for me, you know, we can't be too dismissive of Notting Hill because there are elements oh, of it. Still clarify. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's a big old trip. What I'm talking about is the narrative. I'm kind of flagging up the narrative. Yeah. Yes. I know fully well that there are definite ele mm. elements within Notting Hill Carnival. That's mm. not what I'm saying. Yeah. Mm. But there is a power base at, at play yes. here that dictates the narrative of car, of London Carnival, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and it doesn't matter even even us having a small group because essentially it is too big to manage in the way that we kind of would like to to see it, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, but what I'm saying is, and I, and I and I quote from the site. If I read this to you, what it says: Notting Hill Carnival, and listen, as one of the world's largest street festivals. The Notting Hill Carnival celebrates Caribbean culture in Britain. Well, that's a lie for a start. Every August, yes, that happens. From the first event in 1959, that's again historically correct, yeah, the carnival in the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea has continued to grow with steel bands, street food, dancing commonplace. By bringing together talents from London's Caribbean community, the festival is a celebration of cultural diversity creativity in the arts that's okay. a lie 
Okay, yeah. but forget, but forget uh, London. They still also say Leicester Carnival, one of the biggest carnivals outside of London, but it still holds true to some of the elements of carnival. Leeds Carnival, people go yeah. to Notting Hill or they go to Leeds. Leeds holds true to the spirit of carnival. What we're saying is, it's not, it's not the fact that carnival is outdated. We're saying that there are elements of it that has fallen by the wayside that some have been able to hold on to, some haven't been able to hold on to. But the history of carnival, the presence of carnival, is not just a party. It's a celebration of our culture that we need to hold on to for the benefit of the generations to come. That's where we are. Okay. okay, right. We're uh, coming to the last couple of minutes. Give everybody 30, 30 seconds. Yeah, okay. 30 okay. seconds each. Right. I want to okay. jump yes. in. Right. I want to jump in to support uh, Tunde on the point he said about the narrative and also maybe having an overarching, because they are bodies, having an overarching body that says the narrative, because I'm sorry, whether you like it or not, the narrative of carnival is entertainment. What you want to do with such an overarching body is if they are conscious, is to at least move it towards edutainment. And then the Thanks. history and stuff yeah. that my sister Camille is talking about mm. would have a space in there. Mm -hmm. Tunde also talked about unity. The only way we can have that unity is having that overarching board, because there are different organizations, but that overarching board that says, this is what it means. We talked about the Holocaust. The Holocaust is spoken in one narrative. A lot okay. of the Asian events are spoken in one narrative. It's only the African events. Well, brother, where it's on. Entertainment. Short time. Short time. Next person, please. Thirty seconds yes. just to so, elaborate. So there are so many more things I had wanted to say, um, but um, in a nutshell, yes, I do feel like um, obviously there's elements which are different overarching i do feel like I, my mind goes back to like marxist um the opiate, like religion being the opiate of the people and i do feel like carnival kind of is our opiate because we lead such oppressed lives and it's really difficult so for me i know for me i i, I go let loose sometimes so um that's one of the aspects but also like what cheryl was saying at the beginning in terms of i'd like to see how carnival can help support are, um, like in terms of the overrepresentation of people, um, black people in the prison systems and mental health systems, how are we how are we helping in terms of those aspects? Okay, then move on. Cheryl, thirty seconds, please. To me, carnival is about community unity, where we forget everything and just celebrate together. Okay, thank you. Sunday, thirty seconds, please. I'm I'm happy to end. Uh, ah. <laughs> uh, Camilla, Camilla, your mic's on. You're mute. I'm just saying, I don't want to forget myself. I always want to know who I am and where I came from. So once we're holding on to that, then that's what's important. Okay. Um, as you know, we could have gone on for another two, three, four days <laughs> in discussing this issue. But it's good that we start that conversation. And it's important that the, the narrative is, is out there you know what I mean? And we have to really think about what exactly means, yeah? The whole part of these three discussions was a lot about narrative and what does it mean to us? And what does it mean in terms of culture, our cultural footprint? It's very important. We need to define our own cultural footprint. And that seemed to be fading away gradually. We have to reclaim that. I'm not sure how it's going to be reclaimed, but we have to really think about what is our cultural footprint. We want to make that, that, that stand in the sand. So you say, okay, that's ours. It's not dictated by anybody else, which is very difficult. But we must continue to strive forward, to work within groups, small groups, big groups, within the family, continue the discussion, to hopefully one day we'll have a carnival like the Caribbean has, embracing all yeah. its ancestors' things, all its little things which makes it so important to the Caribbean to do the masquerade, the clowns, all the little things which we kind of slightly forgot in, in terms of the bigger picture in terms of that um i think we're coming to the end now but for the viewers um we're gonna have a short one minute interval so you just you're gonna, you're gonna your system gonna close down for just one minute so please log back on in a minute's time to ensure that um you can have to re reconnect for the next couple of hours but we don't finish till 12 o'clock you know this is the last live discussion there are other discussions happening but i'm sure for all the panel members um that you enjoyed the, the lively discussion. <laughs> but it's good, it's good that we can have that and have it in a way where we can learn from each other and really move forward 
in terms of, you know, it's, it's a huge task. And this alone is a huge task because I can remember saying our young people need to embrace carnival because it's so important. And now all of us can go to the Caribbean, like myself, to celebrate different forms of carnival. 